सर लोक इन के प्रेजेंटेशन सुरू करा स्क्रीन शेयर कर गुड मॉर्निंग वन एंड ऑल बैक फॉर द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ लास्ट डे ऑफ दिस फाइव डेज फैक्टर डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑन एडवांसेस इन सिविल एंड स्ट्रक्चरल इंजीनियरिंग फॉर दिस मॉर्निंग फॉर रिसोर्स पर्सन प्रोफेसर दिग्विजय पवार फ्रॉम इंडियन इंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी हैदराबाद द की रिसर्च एरिया ऑफ प्रोफेसर दिग्विजय is uh, transportation engineering before proceeding let me give his brief introduction professor digvijay has completed his masters and doctoral degree in uh, civil engineering in from iit bombay he has uh, completed uh, his graduate uh, from walchand college of engineering sangli his research interest include traffic operation behavioral modeling vehicle and pedestrian safety intelligent transportation system naturalistic driving study highway geometric design and statistical modeling and classification techniques his uh, keen research uh, interest is uh, driver and pedestrian behavior traffic safety professor uh, digvijay has honored and uh, recognition with a different award uh, he has received a uh, Best PhD thesis award on urban mobility in cities for developing countries from France in a uh, order to 2017. He has awarded for excellence in thesis work for the 2014 to 16 for outstanding research contribution from the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. He is also affiliated with a different professional organization, uh, namely, he is a life member of Institute of Urban Transport. life member for the indian road congress member of eastern asia society for transportation study as well as world conference on transportation research society professor digvijay also member of different board of studies from maharashtra as well as uh, another part of the country he is also reviewer of the peer reviewed journal and uh, he worked uh, at uh, iit hyderabad in a different capacity he has also published many research paper in a different peer reviewed journal as well as chaired a different uh, sessions in international conferences it is our privilege that uh, professor digvijay with us for this session professor digvijay i welcome you on behalf of department of civil engineering government engineering college karan and a department of applied mechanics government engineering college nagpur now i request professor digvijay please proceed the session yes uh, thank you for such a lovely introduction uh, thanks to professor uh, lanke professor rajan for uh, giving me this opportunity i am very much thankful to uh, government college of engineering uh, nagpur for extending this as well as karad of course and uh, uh, for inviting me to give this talk now uh, basically uh this talk is more about different technologies that we can opt for or we can deploy in the field in order to, in order to advance uh i, I can say uh, safety aspects to the drivers when they are driving on the road now this research is is again a similar approach uh a one attempt from our side to understand how icws that is intersection conflict warning systems can be used in india 
to reduce the uh, number of crashes on the Indian roads. Uh, this is first of its kind study, uh, which, which is taken by us. Um, the, the test bed is developed in IIT Hyderabad. I'm going to explain more about that. So to start with, uh, let me first tell you more about what do you mean by gap acceptance analysis? You know, some of you might be teaching transportation and uh, generally the transportation subjects which we teach at undergrads, uh, at the undergraduate level, um, they generally don't cover uh, research aspects. We, we, we mostly focus on traffic engineering. We mostly focus on uh, highway geometry design. Uh, we focus on uh, highway materials um, and uh, uh, road design and so on. So now here, this is altogether a different topic for uh, most of you probably. So I'll go a bit slowly and then meanwhile, I'm okay with uh, if you have some questions in between as well and even at the last, uh, at the end of the session, we can take it. So my topic is on uh, how we can use gap acceptance analysis for developing intersection conflict warning systems in India. Now, if you, uh, are you able to see my screen, all of you? Can you just confirm once? Professor Lange, uh, Professor Rajan, can you just confirm no, once? Sir. No, sorry, not visible. It's not visible? Yes. Can you tell me now? Yes, sir. Yes, it sir. is visible, visible now. Yes. It's visible. So shall I continue now? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, perfect, perfect. So uh As, as you all know that, you know, especially intersections and mid-block mid -block crossings, okay, they are, they are critical components of uh, any road network, okay. Uh, this is because they influence the overall performance of the network. Now, when you talk about the performance of the network, what exactly you talk about? We talk about uh, the level of service, you know, we talk about the safety aspects. We talk about how comfortable the riders are uh, commuting on the given road. So that is what we, when we say performance of the network. And then if you look at uh, developed countries, in most of the developed countries, the unsignalized intersections okay, and mid-block crossings both are controlled with stop and yield sign. So most of you are aware what do you mean by stop sign and what do you mean by yield sign, right? So stop sign is, is octagonal in shape. You might have seen that it's a red in color and stop. Uh, there is a indication, there's a, there's a wording inside the signage saying that stop, okay? Which, which means actually you're supposed to stop completely and then proceed uh, or then you're supposed to cross the intersection. Whereas when you talk about yield, which is, which is a triangular signboard and it's the inverse, it's, uh, it's inverse of uh, uh, usual warning signs, okay? So that indicates the driver has to yield, okay? Driver has to yield means driver has to slow down. Driver has to slow down and then he has to look for possible available gaps, okay? Look for the safety and then he has to proceed. So that, that is the meaning of yield sign. Whereas in case of stop sign, you're supposed to stop completely irrespective of uh, there are vehicles on, on the major road. Okay. Now these priorities are actually respected. They are respected. They are, they are really cared by, by the users of the road in most of the foreign countries. But when it comes to India, these priorities are not respected. People don't understand who is on the highest priority and who is not. So that's why, you know, we come across a lot of issues uh, which are related to crashes. Um, you know, you might have seen road rage and so on. So these are all actually outcomes of not understanding the priorities on the road. Now, this is what I was talking about. In, in India, you know, as I said, the priorities are not respected. Add on to that, not all intersections or even mid-block crossings have stop or yield sign. So that is something, you know, very important. Now in India, what happens is whatever priorities we decide are mostly based upon the pursued safety. It's mostly upon the pursued safety. Okay, now when I talk about uh, unsignalized intersections, I'm talking about uh, the nature, 
the way they are actually uh, i can say uh, they are functioning to give an example in india more often we say as uncontrolled intersection rather than saying unsignalized intersection okay we say uncontrolled because nobody has a control over it okay signages are not respected so that's why the analysis of traffic and pedestrian movement it becomes very complex okay and if you look at modeling traffic operation at these facilities mostly since because the traffic is heterogeneous it's mixed in condition uh, it is quite difficult you know if you compare to unsignalized intersection which are standard type of intersection in most of the foreign countries now if you look at the models for performance evaluation uh, they are quite standardized in many countries and and also they follow their standards that is something very important for example uh, we talk about highway capacity manual it's it's, it's a very famous uh, well known manual uh, uh, developed in us for us of course uh, 2010 was the latest version they have and um, it actually gives a proper methodology for unsignalized intersections okay uh, which are controlled with stop sign however you know it it does not speak about uncontrolled intersection it stop it, it talks only about signalized intersections uh, uh, it talks about only stop controlled uh, intersection not signalized unsignalized but stop controlled intersection but it is completely silent on uncontrolled means when there is no control at all now why uh, why it is uh, uh, challenging why it is important to study this aspect now if you look at the uh, fatality rates you know if you look at the fatality uh, this is 2017 data of course we have a 2018 data also with us but more or less it is same now if you look the most vulnerable road users are two wheelers and pedestrians now two wheelers and pedestrians if you combine even bicycles you know if you combine together they account for almost 50% almost 50% so this vulnerable road users two wheelers pedestrians cyclists they are unsafe they are not safe on indian roads now why they are vulnerable of course we know that they are directly exposed to the traffic they don't have any kind of shield around them okay so when i talk about shield uh, i am saying like uh, in case of car users you all know that uh, you have something uh, something around you which takes care of first impact this is not the case with uh, two wheelers motorized two wheelers uh, bicycles and pedestrians so they are called as vulnerable road users okay now if you look our roads they are quite unsafe unsafe for all this uh, we are use okay even cars taxis vans light motor vehicles auto rickshaws their share is also quite high okay i was telling you about mixed traffic condition uh, people use terminology called as heterogeneous traffic now what do you mean by that now let's understand this uh, uh, in depth when you talk about heterogeneity when you talk about mixed traffic condition there are complex situations you know heterogeneity is not only in terms of different 